Two of the most talked about video cameras released in the last year have been the Blackmagic Cinema Camera Full Frame 6K and the new high-end camera from Sony, the Burano. We are going to find out if the Burano is really worth 10 times the cost of the Blackmagic. Can you really see a difference in image quality? And I want to explain why I own both of these cameras. Before we go comparing these two cameras, let me just mention that the price tag of a camera is not solely determined just by its image quality. I know there's going to be lots of experienced DPs out there thinking about this specific reason as we compare the images a bit later. So it's great if we can just remember that cameras are always just tools. That brings me on to a question that I often get asked. Why would I own both of these cameras? Well, as I just mentioned, cameras are just tools. And although I would love to shoot everything on the Brano because it's new and exciting, the reality is that all cameras have strengths and weaknesses. And owning both of these cameras allows me to choose the right tool for each project. Sometimes you need a small lightweight camera because it is the right tool for the job. And I've got to admit, I absolutely adore the Blackmagic image quality. Before we go comparing footage, I've had this Crane 3S gimbal sitting in my studio for way too long being unused. So to show a token of my appreciation to all the viewers and subscribers of this channel, I want to give it away. So stay till the very end of this video to find out how to win. Let's not waste any more time, hit the subscribe button and let's jump into some footage. As always, I will use the same lens across both cameras and I will match up white balances and ISO etc will be on screen somewhere as we're comparing the footage. Here I wanted to compare dynamic range and it was a really sunny day so harsh conditions for both cameras. I dialed in the white balance to 6000 Kelvin as it just looked right to my eye. I don't think that any of the cameras here nailed the skin tones. The Sony being a classic Sony looks a little too magenta and the black magic just looks way too green. But what I will say is I messed around and both of these images can be fixed really easily using the raw settings when editing. If you look at the sky above my head, I do think that the Burano is rolling the highlights off in a much kind of smoother or softer way. But there is a little bit more contrast in the sky of the black magic. I'd say I prefer the way the Burano is doing it. If you're wondering why the black magic looks wider, it's simply because it captures open gate. This is something the Burano does not do, so that's a big positive for the Blackmagic. I used an Amaran F22 as a key light for my face set to 5600 Kelvin, same as both cameras. Both look good, again I feel the Blackmagic is struggling to separate the colours here compared to the Burano. Take a look at the back wall and how much more the Burano is finding different colours compared to the Blackmagic. And also the red tube light beside my head has so much more colour information on the Burano. This one for me, the Blackmagic does really well. I love how it's bringing out the blues in the skies more than the Burano and even most professionals will not be able to tell the difference between these two images and no way does one image look like it comes from a camera that costs 10 times as much as the other. Punching into 500% these cameras match so well when outside in daylight. None of these cameras are sharp, both being cinema cameras, I don't think sharpness is the aim anyways. This one is a win for the Brano for me, just shooting into the sun to see what happens. If you look at the sky and the way that the Blackmagic has blown out the sun, it just looks a little bit ugly and overexposed where the Brano has rolled off the highlights in an incredibly soft way. I did do a low light test here, but I did not want to spend too much time on it as we all know the Sony will run away with it. Blackmagic cameras have never been amazing in low light. At 400, they're both nice and clean. Moving up to the second base range of ISOs on both cameras and setting them to 1,250 ISO. Again, both are really good and totally usable images. 3,200 ISO now, which is native for both cameras, but the Blackmagic is really noisy for a so-called native ISO. I have never been a fan of shooting 2300 on Blackmagic Pocket cameras or this new full frame 6K. It's usable, but it's not great to say it's listed as the native ISO. 8000 ISO, which is the max on the Blackmagic camera, and it looks a mess as expected. 
Maybe this image could be saved on the Blackmagic if you use a ton of denoiser. And as expected also, the Sony looks strangely clean. The Brano also goes up to 10,000 ISO, which is still cleaner than the 8,000 on the Blackmagic. A slow motion test now and I got out my prop money and a money counter from an old project. Here is what it looks like on the Brano in real time. And now here is what it looks like in 120 frames per second 4K on the Brano. It looks really good and usable, there is no weird artifacts or noise. I don't think there is any downsampling or binning going on here, or if there is, it's incredibly good. The Blackmagic drops down to 1080p for its 120 frames per second and also has a pretty big crop. It also has some artifacts and noise as it definitely is doing some line skipping and binning but I guess it could be used if you really needed it. Rolling shutter test now and this is definitely not a strong point for any of these cameras. I went for max resolution so that is 8.6k on the Brano and 6k on the Blackmagic. It is pretty close and like I said this is a fail for both cameras. Moving the Brano down to 6k resolution to match the Blackmagic 6k and the Brano does get the win. It seems a lot better at this resolution, but really should be better. This should be a non-issue on a camera that costs as much as the Brano. To compare the raw codex out of both these cameras, I recorded a 10 second clip of the exact same thing on both cameras. To cut a long story short, I found that shooting the XOCN LT inside the Brano is equivalent to shooting eight to one Blackmagic RAW which is great for me because I tend to shoot eight to one across all my Blackmagic cameras. As I mentioned in the intro to this video, there is so much more to what dictates the price of a camera than just its image quality. I don't think I need to go diving into bodies and usability and ergonomics as the Sony offers so much more, it's kind of a pointless test. Even when shooting these test shots, it was so much easier to capture them on the Brano when it comes to rigging, batteries, ND filters, and just overall ergonomics. And I just don't think there is much fun in hating on the Blackmagic in that way. Let's just appreciate what Blackmagic's party trick has always been, and that is offering exceptional image quality at a low price point. I have said it since the very first day I got to use the full frame Blackmagic and that it is the best image quality for under $3,000. Before you go anywhere, let me tell you how you can get your hands on this gimbal right here. In the description to this YouTube video, I'm going to place a link to sign up to my newsletter. It's free and I send out one or less emails per month, just giving out my advice for video creators. I'm going to use a random number generator to pick someone who signs up in the next 30 days. I will then contact you via the email that you signed up in and I'll tell you that I want to send you the gimbal. So make sure to sign up as soon as possible. And it gets even better than that because I want to tell you how you only need one lens to make incredible videos. And that lens that you need is in this video right here.